I've seen a number of posts on social media where people are struggling to get good images from the RF100-500 and R5 combination. This gets a wide range of responses and they're not always helpful. RTFM and the like. So I decided to make a video with the advice that I follow. In the video I take a trip to a local bird sanctuary and observation post to get some footage and photographs for use as examples. I'll give you my tips that I personally follow, which help me get the best from this lens, but they also apply equally to any lens or camera combination. Let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome to my channel. So here we are on the approach to leaving Hall Lynx Bird Sanctuary. This is the time of year when the geese start to arrive, and if we're lucky we'll see them coming into land. I've seen a few flocks overhead in the last few days, so we should be in luck. There are three hides in this area, and quite a few lagoons, where various wading birds just love to come. It's an old industrial area, which has been converted into this sanctuary with lots of shallow lagoon areas, especially to attract the birds. I chose this as it will allow me to demonstrate the types of issues I'll be talking about, so look out for photos as we go through the tips and advice section. First, let's get the basics right. Now this boom may like teaching your granny how to suck eggs, but it's important to consider everything for best results. Consider stability. Use a tripod where possible. Or if you don't have access to a tripod, then use a three-point hold in your hand and keep your elbows in tight to your chest and brace yourself there and don't leave everything flying about. At the lagoon, I knew there were handy shelves at the hides, so I left my tripod in the car. Next, we'll consider the shutter type. The vibration on mechanical shutters can often affect sharpness. So personally, I use electronic first curtain because in this mode, the shutter curtain closes after the shot is taken, which removes the shock and vibration of the shutter mechanism. Electronic shutter is an option, although more prone to rolling shutter effect. It does have the advantage of even higher frame rates for certain sports and fast action photography. Next, we'll consider filters and whether they add any benefits. Don't use any cheap filters which are optically inferior to the lens. Quality fi filters can help in certain circumstances, but for the best, sharpest results, don't use any filter at all. If you're concerned about lens protection, I rely on my lens hood for protection rather than any cheap filters that a shop might give away or try and persuade me to buy. Next, we'll consider cleanliness. Make sure your lens elements and sensor are clean and regularly check for smudges or dust. Now we come to managing expectations. Like most of you, I don't have access to a 400 2.8 or a 600 f4. The benefits of these lenses are clear, but they're out of my range, so I keep my expectations accordingly. The R5 is a 45 megapixel sensor and the lens at 500mm goes to 7.1. Think about these limitations of your camera and lens and choose your settings for the best results. Now this might be back to basics for some, but I'm often surprised how many people don't give fuller thought to the exposure triangle. Shutter speed, aperture and ISO. Let's take shutter speed. High megapixels will accentuate motion blur and camera shake. To overcome this, it's normal to increase the shutter speed. Normally I would use the reciprocal rule, where a 100mm lens 
you'd use one hundredth of a second, and a 500mm lens would use one five hundredth of a second, and so on. But with 45 megapixels on the sensor, this accentuates the blur, so we need to factor that by two or three, especially with longer lenses that are more prone to shake. With a lens at 500mm, typically I'd be using 1250th of a second. Now of course, in-body stabilisation will affect this, and in theory we should be able to hand hold down to 1 400th of a second without incurring motion blur, but some birds jitter all the time. IBIS doesn't fix everything. If you're prone to shake, either because of the situation you're in, i.e. no steady stance, and even unstable ground, being buffeted by wind, or maybe you just can't hold the camera and lens combination weighing 2.4 kilograms for long periods. There are other factors to consider like breathing and environment, which can affect your ability to hold a steady shot. We're not all Olympic by athletes who can control breathing and heart rate to get their shots on target. It's also worth noting that some bird and sports action photographers prefer to switch off IBIS and rely on high shutter speeds to freeze the action. Now let's look at aperture. At 500mm the RF 100-500 is 7.1, wide open, but not many lenses are at their best sharpness wide open, particularly zoom lenses. You'll get better sharpness stopping down slightly to typically f10. Because we're in the exposure triangle and constrained by aperture and shutter speed, that leaves us only with ISO to balance this setup. I found a handy website to help demonstrate this. As you can see from this online tool, setting the camera to shutter priority, I set the shutter speed to 1250th of a second, and now if I increase the ISO to allow the aperture to reach 7.1, you can see the ISO needs to go as high as 800. Now remembering the lens will be sharper stopped down, I need to let the ISO climb to 1600 or even 3200. In poor lighting, I might need to go even higher. This online tool only simulates up to 3200. We're lucky with modern sensors like the one in the R5, which can amplify light with much lower noise. It's much better than previous generations of Canon cameras. Also, many photo edit applications are extremely good at removing noise and provide excellent results even at higher ISOs. If I can't get the shot inside those parameters, I know something needs to give and that's usually my expectations. If I drop the shutter speed, I know I'll get a lower keeper rate with more apparent motion blur and possible camera shake. This is where we might need to spray and pray to get a few sharp images. Or I could let the ISO go higher. Typically I'm okay with the ISO floating up to 6400 or maybe 8000 in certain situations and rely on processing to solve the noise. Another huge contributor to unsharp photos is atmospheric conditions. This can be caused by heat, dust, moisture and general weather conditions. Resist the temptation to go for shots that are too far away, relying on the zoom to pull it in. Longer distance between the lens and the subject increases the amount of atmospheric disturbance and no amount of high megapixels or reach on your lens will help you overcome that. This takes us to cropping. Excessive cropping will also make the image more noisy and less sharp. My advice in this is to think of using the zoom to fill the frame rather than to pull in distant objects. As a rule I try to stick with. If I can't fill a quarter of the frame with the image I'm looking for, I know that cropping in post will be too severe, so it's wasteful to keep shooting. 
sadly. It's a rule I often break. If you can fill the frame using the zoom, the results are much better. You can enlarge a photograph with no problems. With this lens, the temptation is to always use it wide open to try and blur that background. As we've discussed, it's rare to find a lens which is sharpest wide open, and this is particularly true of zoom lenses. However, using f10 and possibly narrower apertures can leave us with unsightly backgrounds to our photos. The trick here is to plan for the shot and have your background as far away as possible from the subject. This is not always possible, so it's useful once again to rely on modern photo editing applications to give us options. Often the image can be improved by treating the background different to the subject, to make it stand out better. This can be done with the use of masks to blur or desaturate the background scenery. If you're not confident with masking, you can often achieve good results just by altering the HSL sliders, hue, saturation and luminance, and look for the predominant colours that separate the image from its background and adjust them accordingly to improve apparent separation. There are applications like Luminar AI and Luminar Neo, to name but two. There are other applications equally as good. These, however, make it easier to achieve background blur. Currently, Luminar offers a bokeh AI tool that works with portraits, but rumour has it they'll be extending this to other subjects like wildlife. There's another factor you should consider, and that's focus technique. Apart from making sure you're in the correct AF mode, Animal IAF for instance, you may also find that slowing down the AF tracking sensitivity speed can make it more accurate. This slows down the AF hunting effect and allows it to settle better on a subject. This can be done in the AF menu, page 3. Choose your case number and reduce the tracking sensitivity by minus 1. If after all this, you still find difficulty getting sharp images from this lens, there is always the possibility that you have a bad copy or the lens has been damaged in some way. So your next point of call will be Canon or the shop where you purchased. And now I'd like to share some channel news. This may be seen as a small achievement to you, but things like this make a difference to me. Starting from scratch just over one year ago and trying to get noticed on YouTube and build a channel can be a daunting task. And achievements like this mean a lot to a small creator. The latest figure is in fact 397. All who have clicked on the subscribe button in the last year. So thank you all. I really appreciate the support. With the news that YouTube are giving access to the community tab for 500 subscribers, I'm hopeful that those who haven't clicked the subscribe button will do so now to help me reach that new target. The community tab is a good way of keeping in touch with my subscribers and I'd like to be able to use it. Why not try this video next, which YouTube thinks will interest you? Or perhaps this one might suit you better. And thanks for watching, rumour has it. I hope you'll be back soon.